Hey, it's Jeff, welcome back to another video. I have a bunch of repotting to do as basically I've neglected this for the last little while. I'm gonna start off with this uh, philodendron Lynette. I noticed it has one of those like little seed pods in here. So I'm gonna take this out of the pot, break up the soil, try and remove that. I don't know if it's a fabric or if it's a foam, but I'm just going to give it some fresh soil, more of like an aeroid mix, something pretty chunky. Um, I also have a bunch of plants that are currently growing in sphagnum moss. I don't really care for sphagnum moss as a growing medium for like long term. It's really good for propagation and that sort of thing. But the only thing that I really use sphagnum moss for right now is like top dressing my anthurium. So I will have a nice chunky uh, soil, but I put the moss on top and I will basically uh, wet it with my little spray bottle just so it holds in um, some of the moisture like in the soil and it doesn't uh, dry out too fast. So that's basically all I use uh, sphagnum moss for. So I wanna take these guys out of the, uh, of the moss. I hate it because you have to untangle it from the roots. Um, most times, like these philodendrons, they have a little bit of a thicker root, so it's not as hard removing the moss like you would with a Hoya. Hoyas have very thin roots and it's just, it's brutal to get the moss off. So yeah, I have a few that I might get to today, but I probably have maybe half a dozen, maybe eight plants uh, currently in moss. So I'm gonna tackle some of these today, get them out of the moss, but that's pretty much the plan for today's video. Okay, so this philodendron Lynette is really dry and it looks like it's actually maybe a few plants. It's not one stem, it looks like maybe three or four stems in there. So I'm gonna just squeeze the edges here, just tip it upside down, got my little, dirt tray here and actually the roots have started to encircle the pot here so I'm glad that I'm taking it out um, and just going to kind of freshen it up a little bit. Just going to loosen the, the soil up being really careful not to damage the roots. I don't want to send these plants into shock so I'm going to try and be as careful as I can with the roots. It's been a busy last couple days. Um, my son's birthday, uh, two days ago, we went to like a laser tag, had fun there. So I've been, I haven't really done many plant tasks or chores this week. Uh, uh, I don't know if it is in this, one of those pods or not. I like to use my little pencil to break up some of the soil as well. I may have to upsize this pot because it's definitely outgrown it. And now having it taken apart, I kind of want to propagate it, but I might let it grow a little bit bigger here first. Okay, so this plant, I noticed some of the newer leaves were coming out a little bit deformed and maybe a slight yellowing like this one right here. So now that I'm disturbing some soil, get off my little chair here. There is soil sticking to the back side of this leaf. And that tells me it's probably sticking on to spider webs. So I'm gonna get my little flashlight and see if there's little webs back there. So it may have spider mites, stand by. I always grab a little flashlight and then I will place the, the light just behind the leaf and it will illuminate small webs. Hopefully this shows up on camera, but right in this area, you'll see when you put a flashlight behind it, you can see, I don't know if it'll focus or not, come on. Right there, there's some very tiny little webs. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer. I don't know if you can see them, but there is some very tiny little webs. So that's what I do is I will illuminate or try and like hold the flashlight behind the leaf. Whoops, there's some right there as well. Let's see if I can get in there. There, there's a good one. You can see just a thin little line. It looks like just a very small piece of string right here on this leaf, right there. Dogs are losing their minds upstairs, but that is spider mite webs. 
So I'm gonna take this over to my bathroom just in the uh, shower or tub. I'm gonna use the Safer's End All. I'm gonna spray the entire plant down and then I will get rid of the soil. I'll let that dry and when the product dries, um, basically it's not effective anymore. So this is a, it has to be like in contact with the uh, bugs or pests. So uh, spray it on the leaves, coat it on the top and the underside and then let it dry and that should do the trick. And I will basically blast it off with some water afterwards as well. So you can take this over to the shower and spray it off. Just emptied or I just discarded of the soil. Normally I like to reuse soil, but uh, if I find a plant that has bugs or pests on it, um, and if I'm doing a repot, then I'll just toss out the soil and put it in something new. But otherwise, I like to try and reuse uh, the soil that I have. If there's, if there's nothing wrong with it, then there's no reason why you can't use it with uh, repotting or like another plant. So, okay, so now I'm gonna take out this uh, absolutely gorgeous philodendron varicosum. Uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, okay, well, I forgot what I was gonna say, but um, I filled up this little Tupperware container with some lukewarm water. I don't want it to shock the roots, but I'm going to um, submerge it in the water here just so uh, it can help loosen up the soil or the sphagnum moss. That way it'll be a little bit easier to get it off the roots. So like I said, it's, it's typically not difficult if you have a plant with like thicker roots, but when you start getting into the uh, Actually, they might have smaller roots on this one, so it's probably gonna be a little bit difficult. Uh, once you start getting into plants with uh, thin roots like Hoyas, it's, it's a nightmare to get off. It's really hard to remove dry sphagnum moss, so that's why I like to soak it. It's coming off not too bad right now, but you have to be careful of like the very thin like secondary roots. Okay, yeah, there's lots of thin roots on this, so that's what I was worried about. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. Um, philodendrons, so they're very susceptible to spider mites and thrips and all that kind of thing, as all those types of bugs as well. So after I repot it into some soil, I'm actually going to use my like high pressured spray bottle, so, um, blast off the leaves. I'm not gonna treat it with any like insecticide, soap or uh, spray or anything like that, but Sometimes a good blast from like a garden hose or like a spray bottle or something like that should be uh, should be sufficient enough as well. Okay, so it's coming off not too bad. Whenever, I don't know if you've ever taken off sphagnum moss before, but it's kind of hard to tell what's a root and what's moss. Sometimes the sphagnum moss is a little bit darker, like it looks like a root, but it's actually a little bit darker. And when you have healthy um, plant roots, they should be more white. I'm dripping everywhere. They should be more white like these. So that's kind of how I differentiate between uh, if it's a piece of sphagnum moss or if it's an actual root, which you don't want to pull off because I'm trying to limit the amount of damage that I cause to these roots because I don't want it to go into too much shock starting to push out uh, a new leaf right here. It's not into the phase or stage where it's gonna be unfurling or unraveling soon. So that's why I'm doing it today. Um, basically, this is just like dismantling a little puzzle. I'm just lightly tugging at uh, individual strands of sphagnum moss. So if you grab like one big clump, most likely roots are gonna be entangled in that and you'll be pulling out large chunks of roots and that might, uh, might not make the plant happy. Okay, so right here, you see there is a large root and the moss is all entangled. So here's one that has a little bit of a darker center strand, so that pulls away. And then you can see the, the roots right here. I will be reusing this moss. I don't throw it out. Basically what I do is you take it out of the water, give it a good squeeze, and then I just put it on like in a pot or on a tray and just let it dry out, set it aside, put it in a, a, like a Ziploc bag or something like that. And then you can reuse it for like top dressing your anthuriums. Uh, what else do I use it for? Uh, you can top dress um, philodendrons as well. I might put a little bit on top just to kind of hold in the moisture for the first little bit with these plants. 
But yeah, I reuse sphagnum moss because it because I reuse sphagnum moss because it is not a renewable resource. Um, they basically like dig up all these moss bogs or whatever, and then um, kind of destroys ecosystems, I guess. So I try and reuse as much as I can, just you know, doing your part. Okay, so this is time consuming. That's the thing about this sphagnum moss is it's just really time consuming. Got a few bigger chunks here that are coming off. It's funny, I shouldn't even be telling this story, but uh, my mom was here the other day for my son's birthday. And I have a lot of plants in my house. Uh, it's been, yeah, a growing collection over the last few years. And I heard her when she came in, she leaned over to my wife and she said, you have a lot of patience. Uh, so yeah, I was just kind of like, yeah, whatever. I know I got a lot. It's not a big deal. But then the she's gonna be so mad that I <laughs> post this. But then uh, she posts on Facebook her living room, and she has uh, a bunch of plants because she was asking me for some plants, like if I had some to to give to her. And she's got a lot in her living room, and uh, she posted on Facebook the, the the picture of her living room, and uh, <laughs> my wife commented that. It's starting to look like our house and she says yeah it looks so beautiful so kind of contradicting um, sentences so I don't know if she she likes all my plants but apparently she likes her plants so yeah okay so I got most of the moss off here <laughs> I got most of the moss off of the roots and everything looks really good uh, I don't see any root rot or anything like that they're all nice healthy white roots and this big uh, chunk I guess they're called and it's, uh, it's got a little side shoot from one of the nodes so that's how it's growing is from this uh, chunky node that was uh, propagated previously so I'm gonna take off as much moss as I can I'm going to be like I said putting it in a nice area mixture but I don't want the uh, the moss remaining on the roots because moss holds I guess I can sit down now. Uh, moss holds uh, moisture, and if you have uh, like a lot of moss around the roots, it just retains that moisture, and it could potentially lead to root rot. Not saying it will, but a lot of people will add moss in as a soil amendment as well if they use like a nice chunky mix, but they want a little bit of moisture retention, they'll add moss into that as well. But at least it's not, you know, wrapped around uh, completely suffocating those roots. So there's the finished product. I'm just going to rinse it off a little bit like that. And I just basically put some moss back on. Uh, make sure you do it in clean water, not, uh, not this. So I did, I don't know if you saw, but I did push the moss aside. Okay, so this is ready to be potted up. I'm actually going to do this one here as well. This was sold to me as a varicosum, but I'm not too sure if it's a melanochrysum. See if I can get a nice shot of it. I'm not too sure if it's a melanochrysum or if it is a splendid or maybe even, I don't think it's a gigas because gigas basically doesn't have these lobes at the top. A little bit of red tinge to the back. I'm thinking it might be a splendid um, combination between the melanochrysum and the varicosum. So uh, yeah, still gorgeous. I absolutely love it, but you can see it was labeled as varicosum. So I'm gonna take this one out as well. Now I'm kind of debating whether or not to put these two on a wood plank as well. You know what, I think I'm going to. Okay, this guy's really in here and I don't wanna tear the roots. So I want, these guys to continue to grow upright and as they grow if you uh, train them to grow upwards and latch on to like either a moss pole or a wood plank then uh, each new leaf gets larger so I want large varicosum or philodendron leaves okay got a little root at the bottom here that I just might have to tug on and yeah, okay it came out so I want those larger leaves. So I'm going to be adding these to a plank, I think. Same thing, this is a smaller, it's pretty compact, but it's a smaller amount of moss. I might actually let this sit in there for a few minutes. 
It's a little bit encircling on the bottom. Not sure what that is. Just a small piece of moss. Okay, once it gets wet, it's pretty easy. After I am done removing the moss from this guy, then I'm gonna go outside and grab a couple planks, see if I can find some pots for these plants, put them in a nice chunky mix, which I'll show you guys uh, what I use. I hope you guys like these repotting videos because I enjoy doing them. It's just, it's usually time consuming, like taking off all this moss. I knew it was gonna be a, a, a bit of a task to do, so I wanted to make sure I had some time. Uh, kids are at school today. So yeah, I filmed, which I don't even remember which one I filmed this morning. Holy smokes, that's not good. <laughs> which, oh, the Calathea, I filmed the Calathea video this morning. That was only like two hours ago and I completely forgot. Okay, I'm probably not gonna, <coughs> oh, probably not gonna, excuse me, make you guys watch me remove all of this moss on this one. Cause I'm gonna have no viewers left by the end of the video. Okay, I got all the moss off, but this one took a beating. Look at all these roots that were yanked off. This is why I hate sphagnum moss. Look at all these little ones. Just destroyed it. So hopefully it doesn't go into too much shock from the root damage. There's still lots on there. Everything looks good. Don't see any root rot or anything like that. But yeah, this is why I don't like sphagnum moss or buying sphagnum moss plants because it's, it's brutal to get off uh, all the moss without uh, damaging the roots. So I went out to the garage and got one of my wood planks. I cut it in half. And I think I'm going to try and maybe use these clear orchid pots. I'm gonna put the plank in the bottom like that and I'll see if it works uh, like this. The pot, like it's quite a bit larger than what the plant came in, but I'm just gonna try it out here. I don't have like a smaller orchid pot that I want to use. So I'm just gonna fill in the soil here first. I might actually take it out and find uh, a different pot, but um, I'm just gonna try it here. So I don't know if you can see it or not, but I'm using a really chunky mix, like orchid bark, uh, charcoal, perlite, and some tropical soil. I'm just gonna mix it all in the bottom here, and then some at the back as well. Just so this stake stays upright, just like that. And I'm going to try the varicosum here first. I may have put a little bit too much soil in there. Something like that, I think we'll do. And that way it gives the plant a lot of room to grow for more of like the long term. These roots will grow pretty fast now that it is placed on the plank like this. I'll show you here in a second once I fill it all in. So there's something like that. Situated like in the center of the pot, center of the plank. I'm gonna find my plant tape, I guess. And hopefully I can train the aerial roots to uh, latch onto the uh, wood plank and then grow upright. I think I'm okay with the size of the pot. I know it's a little bit large for this cutting. Um, you don't wanna upsize it too big, otherwise there's just way too much soil and the soil holds on to uh, moisture for too long and that tends to lead to root rot. So I'm just going to have to be careful or cautious on how much water I give it. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that around the back. Just lightly secure it. Just doing a rough fit right now. All right, so now I can cut it right there. Just gonna cinch this up just nice and snug. Make sure it's not damaging any portion of the plant. I'll bring that down a little bit, just like that. And then do the, the final adjustment. Get it nice and snug, just so it uh, trains those aerial roots to 
latch on to the uh, back of the board. Okay, I just realized that when I was doing the little plant tape here, I had the pot sitting on the roots and it was like twisting and grinding, but oh man, that's a relief. I didn't damage anything, but yikes, whoops. Okay, well, a root fell off, so. This is what I use for my potting soil. It's a premium tropical plant mix, and then I use uh, orchid mix as well. So it's got some uh, perlite, charcoal, and obviously the orchid bark. I just dump in some mixture like that. And then I do the same with the orchid bark. So kind of like a 50-50 mix. Just dump it in, mix it in, something like that. And that should make for a well-draining soil. And I'm gonna do the same thing with uh, this guy. Just add some, whoops, I'm gonna add the plank first. Put that at the bottom. I'm just gonna add some soil in. I like these clear orchid pots because they have slits on the side here as well. So that just provides uh, good airflow uh, for the roots. It's, uh, it's healthy for the root system when you have a well-draining kind of airy mixture. And then you have these little slits on the side of the pot. You just tuck that down. This one has a little bit of a longer stem. Look at the bottom here. So it's curved a little bit, so I'm gonna put that on the bottom, but I'm just trying to figure out the orientation of how I want it to grow. This one's really delicate, so I don't wanna disturb it too much. Just like that. Let me put this. I don't really care about the bottom leaf so much, so I'm gonna put it like that. Make sure the roots are in, what's left of it. I'll push this down a bit, just so you can see how it's seated in the pot. And I'm going to, this is tough with one, essentially one hand. Okay, I'm just gonna go like this. Okay, push it down a bit. And then add soil to the front and back big chunks I'm gonna put in the front. I'm gonna keep mostly soil at the back. Just, I don't want those big chunky orchid pieces sitting back there. Okay, I'm probably gonna cut this bottom leaf off, which I'm gonna do right now with my pruning shears. I'm just gonna cut this lower leaf off. This to make sure it's the yellow one. Yeah, it's dying anyway, so I'm just gonna snip that guy off. That way I can hold it down here. It's not really like completely perfectly straight in the middle, but that's okay. I'll just use that tape. I don't even know what it's called. There, that's better. It's like a felt, it's like a fabric. So it's got fabric on one side and then it's got Velcro on the back. I'd prefer it if you had like the green um, facing the plant just so it kind of blends in a little bit. But if you put these like prickly things on the plant, it's probably not gonna be good for it, for the stem. I don't want little holes in the stem. This is just dollar store stuff anyways, so it's not the fancy grade. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit more orchid bark. This is a lot of soil. Mixing some of that orchid bark and perlite. There you go, that's some chunky stuff. Okay, that's a little bit better. So I decided to place one at the very bottom. That way it uh, securely positions the cutting. Or the plant, I guess, it's not really a cutting. Just like that, gonna wrap it around the back. So it's like that. Actually, I might bring this around just a bit more. Just like that. And that way, it securely holds it on the stem like that. 
I like to tuck the leaf or it behind the leaf just so it doesn't cause any uh, physical damage to the leaves. So now I'm going to turn it around, just make sure it's nice and snug. And then I'm going to cut off the excess here. Like that. Okay, so that's seated nicely. I like the small little plank. And I'm going to just try and bring this one a little bit closer and each, actually I'm gonna bring it up here. So something like that. So I'm not gonna completely have it butted up against the back. I'm gonna give this plant some time to adjust its leaf orientation. So it's going to want to face the light source so all these leaves hopefully will uh, basically come out in the front like this. Um, so that's why I want this top one like a little bit loose. I don't want to damage that new growth coming in right there. And I don't want to damage this newest leaf like that. I might actually even bring it over here for right now, just like that. And that way it's not going to damage this gorgeous leaf. Like look at that. Brought the varicosum to my bathroom. I'm gonna be spraying it off with my pump and spray. Like I said, cleaning off the leaves and everything, so I'm just gonna blast it off. I'm gonna water the plant here as well, but just make sure front and back, the leaves get blasted like that. That way it just uh, knocks off any spider mites or webs or anything like that. Probably not gonna completely soak the soil. I'm just gonna give those roots a bit of a chance to repair itself as well. Something like that should be good enough. And that way I can wet the little plank there, let that drain through. I just put this towel down just so in case there's any like larger chunks, it doesn't go down the drain. I will take that towel outside and shake it off afterwards. Same thing, just blast these leaves off, making sure there's no spider mites or anything. Wet the plank, give it a little bit of water. Okay, now I brought you upstairs to show you how I clean off uh, plants of any soil. And I'm going to blast this one off as well because I want to get rid of all those uh, little spider webs on there. So I use a large uh, bin or Tupperware container like this as I don't want any of that soil to go down the drain. That'll clog your drain for sure. I put it on lukewarm water so that uh, you don't, you just want to make sure that you don't use cold water or really hot water as uh, to shock the roots. Just spray it off like this and I like to use the more aggressive stream just to knock off any soil like that. I'll rinse off the plant after this. I'll show you the little, it's, it's a really hard compact uh, seed pod. Like this is rock hard. Actually, no, this is foam. Okay, I don't like these foam ones. I thought it was really hard. Okay, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. I can't do it on camera, but I just take a small little screwdriver or even a pencil and you just basically poke the uh, the foam or just like lightly tear it apart. Okay, I got most of the uh, little foam pads off, but I've got a little visitor. Hey, Oscar, good boy. Went for a nice long walk this morning. He's just hanging out with me doing some plant chores. Hey, boy. Yeah, you need a haircut again. Yeah, good boy. Okay, so you can see these. Like it's, it damages a few roots, but you can see it's like a foam material. I think these ones are okay for plants. Um, like when they get larger, uh, basically they start them in these little uh, uh, seed pods kind of thing. And then once it outgrows out, then they just uh, pot it up in some soil. I think these are the ones that are okay for the most part. I don't really know too much about them, but scientifically, I think the fabric ones and the foam ones are okay, but um, I'm not really too familiar with them. But if you know anything about them, uh, leave a comment down in the comment section. Okay, done spraying this or cleaning this guy off. I'm going to see the nice roots. Everything's looking really good. Roots look really healthy. 
Uh, let's see if this, I'm gonna fit this one in. So I'm gonna be using like, I think it's the same size pot, but I'm gonna put it in this little uh, insert here as well. So I'm gonna add some of this soil in the bottom. And just size it up, just, that's actually perfect. And then where's my little cup? Just gonna add soil around it. Set it aside, and then that is all that I'm doing for plant tasks today because it's already taken me, I don't know, a couple hours. These, these types of plant chores take a lot of time. I enjoy doing them, but it's just, it's a lot of time. I got some other stuff to do here today as well, so. I have to study for an exam, a course coming up for work. So I gotta do some reading. So I'll be doing that this afternoon. Might take the dog for another walk. Took Oscar for a walk this morning. I am settling this or seeding this plant a little bit lower in the pot. She might bring it up just a smidge, just like that. It was pretty top heavy and it was a little bit floppy. So I'm just gonna pull this up just a bit. Just because this plant was on my little plant table down here, I'm probably gonna spray off the uh, plants around it uh, with that endol soap as well so that I don't have any issues with those guys. So the uh, schismatoglottis plants were uh, beside it and I know I had a thrips issue with those guys so I just, they can't get a break, those poor things. I don't know if they're prone to spider mites or not but I'm not gonna take any chances. I'm going to spray it off. So lightly packed down, it's back in a pot. I'm gonna put it in this insert, but I'm going to take it over to the bathroom again, just spray it off with the uh, spray bottle, the, the little hose blast off. Uh, just clean the plant up as it's got some dirt in between the leaves and that sort of thing. But I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. I'm done my uh, plant tasks that I needed for the day. Um, if you have any comments or questions, please leave it down in the comment section. Thanks again for watching my videos. I really appreciate the support you guys. I'm creeping up on 40,000 subscribers, so thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Bye.